What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and today we're gonna talk about everybody's new favorite style of bike. The style of motorcycle that everyone can agree on, from Power Rangers on Super Sports to Leather Daddies on Big Black Cruisers. Everybody finds common ground here. The bike that everybody always says they wouldn't mind having in their garage. Yes, I'm talking about that great equalizer, the Scrambler. <laughs> I mean, come on, everyone loves scramblers, and today, I'm gonna tell you why I think that they're bullshit. First things first, let's have a little history lesson. We've got the Brits to thank for the name Scrambler. It was born from off-road races in England called Hair Scrambles that really started to get popular way back in the 1920s. Of course, they didn't make dirt bikes back then. You had to make your own, which pretty much just entailed taking everything unessential off the bike to lighten it up, maybe, maybe fabbing up a high exhaust and fitting some skid plates on it. You see, back in the day, every bike was an off-road bike. There wasn't any fussy plastic super sports or back shit size gold wings back then. Basically, how capable of an off-road machine any motorcycle was, was, was pretty much solely determined by how far its owner was willing to push its limits in the dirt. And the bikes they had back then, man, I gotta imagine you had grapefruit-sized balls to take those things in the dirt. Hair scrambles eventually became popular all over the world, not just in England, and people started building dedicated tracks just for off-road racing, thus motocross was born. And eventually, around about the 1960s, manufacturers finally took notice and they started offering scramblers, or as they now call them, dirt bikes, straight from the factory. And from there, you can trace a direct line to the modern enduro and motocross bikes we have today, much like this KTM 300 sitting behind me. But it all started with some Brits who had a few screws loose and wanted to push their machines to places they weren't meant to go. So with all these advances over the years, why do modern scramblers suck so bad? The short answer is they don't. They're actually amazing. The manufacturers just don't call them scramblers anymore. They call them dual sports. It's just the dumbest thing in the world to think that scramblers made a comeback. I mean, they never went away. The DRZ400, the WR250, the KTM 690, these are all the evolution of scramblers. Bikes you can go bombing through the woods on or that you can ride across the country. Bikes like that, those bikes can trace their heritage directly back to 1920s England and an old Nigel Tricklebottom who thought it'd be fun to ride his triumph into a mud hole. Knowing the Brits, there was probably a whole lot of beers and drunken bets in the pub that led up to this moment, but but God bless Nigel Tricklebottom, because if he had never made good at all his drunken shit talking and rode that triumph into the mud hole, then we wouldn't be where we are today. And that really makes it just the worst sort of irony that Triumph was the manufacturer to kickstart the de-evolution of the modern scrambler. Because it could have been something really amazing. It, it could have been the rebirth of British dominance in the off-road arena. A fire-breathing desert sled that would have made Steve McQueen proud. But instead of a phoenix, we got an abortion. Triumph's new dirt bike was nothing more than a rebadged Bonneville with some high pipes put on it. By now, I'm sure all the Triumph fanboys have got little bitty rage boners and they're, and they're getting ready to leave me an incredibly self-righteous two paragraph long hate comment. Crone about how they take their scrambler off-road all the time and I obviously don't know anything about off-roading. How dare I suggest that the scrambler isn't a capable off-road bike. Seriously, scan the comments. I guarantee there's gonna be some there. Calm your tits, dipshit. I do realize that you can take a scrambler off Road. News flash, you can take any bike off-road. All you gotta do is point your motorcycle towards an area that isn't paved, twist the throttle, and glory be, look at you go, you're off-road. Dual sport, tree jump, ugh. You know, watching Lee Stewart do a goddamn heel clicker on his 900 pound Harley Dyna, that really drives home that old adage that it's not the bike, it's the rider. A great rider can always take the wrong tool for the job and make it look easy. And while killing ants with a sledgehammer might look cool, it's still really ineffective and it's gonna get old real fast. And the Ducati Scrambler, the Triumph Scrambler, the Yamaha Bolt Scrambler, take your pick. 
None of these bikes have any more business being off-road than a Harley Street Glide does. You can certainly do it on any one of them. It's just really gonna suck. But my problem really isn't with the Scrambler's off-road ability, or lack thereof, really, and it's, it's certainly not with how they look. I mean, I think the Triumph Scrambler's a great-looking bike. That bike is slick as snot, man. Now, as far as some of the other Scramblers go, I think the Ducati Scrambler is fuck ugly, and it should, it should crawl back under whatever rock it came from, and I think the best word to describe the Moto Guzzi V7 Scrambler is ludicrous. Everybody knows you never go full retard. But hey, all that stuff's subjective anyway. You might think it looks great. My real problem is with how these manufacturers market these bikes to people. All these nouveau scramblers are just are sold with this dream of freedom. No road, no problem. This is the bike that can take you wherever you want to go. So long as where you want to go is some contrived hipster pool party in the middle of the desert where all the dudes play vegan bongos and all the chicks dye their armpit hair to fight the patriarchy. Ah, there it is, busted! The cardinal sin of wearing a t-shirt with a picture of the bike you're riding on it. But as cringeworthy as the Ducati Desert Sled ad is, and it is really bad. I mean, it is dude in a gorilla suit dabbing level bad. Even with all that bullshit and the fact that the front end of that bike looks like the wrong end of a dog, I can't really hate on the desert sled that bad. I mean, they reinforced the frame and really stiffened it up. They put some relatively long travel suspension on the bike. I mean, hell, man. At least Ducati is trying to make a bike that can sort of live up to its namesake. Right now, it's the only scrambler you can buy that seems to give one single fuck about off-road capability. But this bastard still weighs in at 450 pounds, so congratulations Ducati, you've managed to build a $12,000 KLR650. Bravo! Great job. Like I said though, at least Ducati is trying. Unlike our friends over at Yamaha, who could give less than zero fucks about how their scrambler, and I cannot air quote hard enough here, about how their scrambler performs off-road. Triumph, you ain't that much better, but nobody's as bad as Yamaha is, and, and how they try to convince people that they've actually turned the bolt into a real off-road machine. It seems like everyone's trying to look back at the past. But no one wants to do without today's technology. Introducing the best of both worlds. The all new Yamaha SCR 950. Scrambler style and a compact design that's both technically adept and easy to ride. The newest addition to Yamaha's iconic sport heritage line of motorcycles. Translation, Yamaha finally decided it was time to cash in on that nostalgia train. The real funny part about calling this bike a heritage series motorcycle is that Yamaha's heritage of creating air-cooled V-twins only really goes back about as far as the early 80s when they released the Virago to try and take a bite out of Harley's market share. Now that I think about it, it does actually make sense to call it a heritage motorcycle. I mean, Yamaha does have a long and rich history of making cheap Harley knockoffs. Don't get me wrong, I think the Bolt's an excellent motorcycle, but let's call a spade a spade here. It is very obviously a Sportster clone. Back to the video. Scrambler style and a compact design that's both technically adept and easy to ride. Pay attention to that. Count how many times he says Scrambler style. He uses that a lot. And I gotta imagine it's because Yamaha's lawyers figured out that if you actually try to take this bike off road, you're gonna break your damn neck. The 942cc air-cooled V-twin for plenty of low and mid-range torque. At takeoff and roll on. Nine more foot-pounds of torque than the Triumph Scrambler. Plus, that unmistakable V-twin pulse. That unmistakable V-twin pulse. <laughs> Why the fuck does this dude look like everything inside him just died the second that bike started up? Like the realization of how hard he's got to sell his soul to actually pitch this thing as a real off-road motorcycle that, that all just came crashing down on him right at this moment. This face right here, this is the face of a man who has had an epiphany. This is the face of a man who has become fully self-aware. This is the face of a man who is in the throes of a soul-wrenching existential crisis so severe, I wouldn't be surprised if they found him hanging from a belt in his closet after this commercial came out. Hello darkness, my old friend. 
I've come to talk with you again. And a narrow profile makes it nimble and maneuverable on any road. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be making fun of the bike here, but this dude literally looks like he's about to burst into tears at any moment. Of course, if I had to rattle off this bullshit about narrow profiles and tips of the fedora to Yamaha's pass, I'd probably be pretty depressed too. Then there's that traditional scrambler styling with a strong nod to the great Yamahas of yesteryear. Clean. What you see is what you get. False! What we see is a bike that looks like it should be able to bomb down some trails. What we get is a 600 pound cruiser that has about as much business being off-road as a racer scooter. With styling details like spoke wheels with aluminum rims, block pattern Bridgestone Trail Wing Series tires, traditional fork boots, a round headlamp of course. Wow, a round headlight. I've never seen one of those babies on a motorcycle before. But on the flip side, the speedo is straight up LCD. Rugged 7 8 inch handlebars with crossbar. A flangeless teardrop tank with vintage graphics with matching number plates. And an upswept muffler. All framing this classic machine scrambler image. Seriously, the shit they're trying to use as selling points here is just beyond the pale. The all new 2017 Yamaha Bolt now featuring an engine that runs on gasoline. That's right, folks, on gas straight out of the pump for your convenience. And you'll be super comfy speeding down the road on the Yamaha Bolt because it comes equipped standard with rims that are covered in tires made of actual road rubber. Filled with Filled real air for rides so smooth that you'll fall asleep and suffer from actual death. And if you're into customizing, Steel fenders and belt drive make that easier. First off, who the hell puts a belt drive on anything meant to go off-road? Secondly, the only customization that anybody does to a belt drive is to rip it the hell off a bike and replace it with a chain drive. Well, technically at that point, it is good for people who want to customize their bike. A roomy yet narrow seat lets you bring a friend or find the perfect position to attack the back roads. Did I mention, it's got piggyback rear shocks for a comfortable ride, even in the rough patches. Did I mention that those piggyback rear shocks offer a whopping 2.8 inches of suspension travel? 2.8 inches. That is less suspension travel than a Honda Goldwing. Not even making a joke here. You'd have a pretty hard time not bottoming this thing out over a set of railroad tracks, let alone the rough patches on the back roads. It all adds up to an exceptionally well-balanced machine with excellent manners in extremely wide variety of conditions. The SCR 950 from Yamaha. Yamaha's sport heritage just got even richer. Look, the problem here isn't with the bike. It's, the Bolt is a fine bike. The problem here is with how Yamaha is trying to sell the bike, how all these manufacturers are trying to sell these bikes. Because if you're a new rider, or even somebody who's been riding for a while and you want to try off-roading, you'd, you'd look at this bike and you'd look at this commercial and you'd say, well, well hell yeah! Here's a bike that not only looks cool as hell, but it can also take me down all those trails I've been wanting to explore. On the surface, it looks like such an awesome way to just kind of dip your toes into the world of off-roading without having to make the full commitment of buying a dedicated dirt bike. But it ain't. It's a straight up ball face lie. These guys are selling snake oil here because let me tell you, if you've never ridden off road and you're buying one of these modern scramblers as a bike to help you get into riding dirt, <coughs> all it's gonna do is put a big old dent in your pretty metal tank and make you fucking hate riding off road. It is absolutely exquisite irony that all these guys are marketing these bikes as an homage to these off roaders of the past who, who turned their street bikes into scramblers. Guess what? They did that because they had to, because the factory didn't offer anything better, so they invented it themselves. Today's dirt bike technology just would not exist if it wasn't for these old school guys paving the way, if it wasn't for them demanding something more, demanding something better. And these scramblers they're building now, it's not an homage. It doesn't show any respect to the trailblazers of the past. If anything, it's a slap in the face of all those men who pioneered off-road motorcycle racing. I mean, come on, man. You think of Steve McQueen was still alive today that he'd really pick a Triumph Scrambler over even something as basic as a DRZ 400. Hell no! The fact that 
all this technology exists and the manufacturers still choose to sacrifice function to form, it's just insulting. The Yamaha Bolt Scrambler is a perfect example. Once again, Yamaha, seriously, how hard would it have been to grab some WR250 forks out of the parts bin and engineer them to fit on the Bolt Scrambler? You really want to pay respect to your off-road heritage? Then get the damn thing some legs for Christ's sake. I'll say the same thing to Triumph. Why the hell doesn't the Triumph Scrambler have at least the same suspension as the Tiger 800? It's just ludicrous at some point. I mean, you've got the parts right in front of you to do it. Just do it! So why are we putting up with these just these phony, contrived off-road wannabes? The answer is simple. Because we keep buying them. When these big manufacturers know they can get away with just slapping a high pipe and some trail wing tires on a bike, then filming some bullshit hipster jerk-off fest commercial with super slow-mo drifting on flat hardback. And just with that superficial garbage, they've got people hook, line, and sinker. When that's all they gotta do to sell bikes, why would they bother giving us anything extra? Unless we demand something more, they ain't never gonna give it to us. Yes, you do have options. You could just go out and buy a WR250 or a DRZ400. Shit, man, even my XCW300 is street legal. And hell, if you want more road manners than those bikes offer, even the Triumph Tigers and the BMW GS series, those bikes are miles more capable off-road than any modern scramble. But still, man, I feel like it's not too much to ask for a little bit of style with our function. I think the Triumph Scrambler is such a great looking bike. I fucking, I really love it. It's just straight up a cool bike. It really does look like something that Steve McQueen would go racing through the desert on. So Triumph, why don't you make it able to do that? Triumph, Ducati, Yamaha, it's time. It is time to get off your lazy asses and actually make us a bike that can do all the stuff that you're trying to make us believe that the bikes you're selling now can do. It's time to make a scrambler that actually lives up to its namesake. All right, guys, huge thanks for watching all the way through and listening to me ramble on about how much I think scramblers suck. If you really enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like on it. It really does help out a lot. And if you agreed with what I had to say here, please share this video, maybe, Maybe somehow some executive will hear us. Maybe they'll start to listen. Maybe they'll actually give us what we're asking for. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get a scrambler that can actually scramble. Till next time, y'all, keep it weird.